This report includes graphic content. Viewer discretion is advised. It is more than just disturbing. A man led to believe he's about to be shot. Mental torture that takes a very physical turn. Most of this tape, shot in the desert outside Abu Dhabi in late 2004, is so graphic CNN cannot show it. It was given to CNN by this man, Bassam Nabulsi, an American citizen who lives in Houston, but for years lived and worked halfway across the world in the United Arab Emirates, a booming kingdom and strong U.S. ally on the Persian Gulf. The tape came to light because Nabulsi is now suing this man, his former business partner in the UAE, for $80 million. We were buddies. He swore to, to, to look after my family in case something happened to me. That buddy and business partner was Sheikh Isa bin Zayed al Nayan, And while he is not part of the government, his family rules the United Arab Emirates. His half-brother is the crown prince. Sheikh Isa bin Zayed al Nayan is also the torturer on this tape. Look, that torture was known to his family. The government knew about it from day one. The government knew exactly what happened. They're looking away because he is part of the royal family. The torture continues with the assistance of a private security guard who holds the victim down. The sheikh stuffs the man's mouth with sand and on several occasions orders the cameraman to get closer. Over the next 45 minutes, the man is subjected to electric shocks from a cattle prod. His genitals burned and he is repeatedly beaten with a nailed board. The torturer demands salt to be rubbed into the wounds. Screams of pain as the victim is brought to the brink. And at the end, an SUV is actually driven repeatedly over the barely responsive man, a grain dealer accused of stealing. How, mu how much money are we talking about here? It's nothing more than maybe $5,000. The video was shot by Nabulsi's brother, who also worked for the sheikh. Nabulsi says the sheikh ordered his brother to make it. After seeing the tape, Nabulsi says he confronted the sheikh, telling him he must not be a God-fearing person. Nabulsi says that is when the sheikh turned on him. In his lawsuit, Nabulsi claims security officers working for the sheikh ransacked his home, demanding that torture video back. But by this point, Nabulsi had smuggled the tape out of the country. Shortly afterward, Nabulsi was arrested and ultimately convicted on drug charges. And in jail, Nabulsi says, he too was tortured and humiliated by United Arab Emirate police who demanded he return the tape. It was a lot of humiliation. And if I can, I'm, I, I really don't like to talk about it. The government of the UAE says Mr. Nabulsi was in no way mistreated during his incarceration. The tape has become evidence in Nabulsi's Houston lawsuit to bolster Nabulsi's claim that he too was tortured. The Sheikh's Houston attorney confirmed that this is indeed Sheikh Isa on the tape and said the conduct on the tape, of course, is inexcusable. But the attorney goes on to say the sheikh has been unduly defamed by the entire incident and that the man tortured in the desert was investigated by police for theft and bribery in the farming operation. And in a statement, the lawyer said that Nabulsi kept the video from the media while his lawyer was asking for money, a claim Nabulsi's attorney denies. The government of the United Arab Emirates said it investigated the torture incident and found all rules, policies, and procedures were followed correctly by the police department. The review also concluded that the incidents depicted in the videotapes were not part of a pattern of behavior. Nobody will dare say this is wrong. In their own country, they are the supreme law. They are the supreme law. On the torture tape, little is heard from the grain dealer besides screams, <laughs> pleading, <laughs> whimpers. Eventually, he confesses to the theft, but then the sheikh accuses him of lying, and the torture continues. Amazingly, this grain dealer survived. 
As far as the United Arab Emirate government is concerned, quote, the parties involved in the incident settled the matter privately by agreeing not to bring formal charges against each other. Well, our investigative correspondent Drew Griffin joins us now, along with our senior editor for Middle East Affairs, Octavia Nesser, who helped produce this piece. Uh, Drew, I've got to ask you first, there's a new development regarding the release of this tape. What is it from the UAE? Well, we've been seeking comment from the UAE, and their comments seem to keep changing. The latest one that we got today uh, was a little stronger, and uh, they now say, according to the Human Rights Office of Abu Dhabi, that they unequivocally condemn the actions on this change. And as you said in the intro, Hala, they are now going to investigate this, actually re-investigate this, because four years ago we were told, originally, that the police did investigate this. Mm -hmm. And brought no charges Nothing against coming, anybody, right? I've got to ask you, Octavia, and you know, we know this part of the Middle East, well, it's rather unusual that the ruling family and the government of the UAE would come out with something like this, isn't it? Unusual, and this is huge. Just think about it. Four years ago, they investigated the state. They had their statement. When we asked them last week, they gave us a statement basically saying that the story is closed. Uh, they're done with it. So for them to come back today and issue this statement basically condemning the actions on the tape, they, you don't hear any condemnation of the sheikh himself or his actions. And also they're saying they're investigating uh, because they believe that there are some human rights that were abused uh, on okay. the tape. Now, Drew, we uh, are going to read out actually word for word the statement just to give the UAE side of the story and their reaction to the re release of this story. Can we put that up? There we have it. Uh, we will conduct a comprehensive review of the matter immediately and make its findings public at the earliest opportunity. Uh, the events depicted on the video appear to represent a violation of human rights, and therefore these events should be fully reviewed. And I believe that's the end of it. Yeah. And, and Halla, keep in mind, we were told in, in doing this story and in producing this story when we contacted the government that there was an investigation, mm -hmm. that the police were called on the very night this took place, investigated it fully, and they found no wrongdoing. I got to ask you, Drew, about the man who uh, made the tape public and the man who is seen being victimized on the tape. What is the motivation of the man who brought this tape He was forward? the business partner of mm -hmm. the Sheikh. Mm -hmm. He has now uh, been deported from the country. Uh, his business uh, partnership has been severed, he says unfairly, and he believes he is due eighty million dollars in lost revenue from that partnership agreement with the Sheikh. He was clearly in business right. with Sheikh Issa. He's, he's suing at this point? He is suing and he's suing in Houston because that's where the two men met and that's where some of their business deals were formed. All right. What it's about, important to yeah. say mm -hmm. that the lawyer for Sheikh Issa yeah. sent us a statement yesterday saying that He's questioning basically why this man would hold on to the tape for all these years and uh, while his lawyer said, according to the Sheikh's lawyer again, why his lawyer was asking for money in return. And I've got to ask you this about what this says about the, the, the sort of the culture in the Gulf region. This is forcing, this type of tape, the release of this, forcing um, that country to look at itself in a way, right? It is, it is, and it is looking at itself. I mean, by just looking at the statement they released today, they are looking at themselves. But at the same time, the claim by Nabilsi that this is a royal family that's covering up for a brother, when they don't mention the name in the statement, when they don't uh, condemn his actions in the statement, that leaves you to believe that maybe they're looking at themselves, but they're not there.